ethics really is looking at uh, a humanistic perspective, making sure that the lens we use is a lens of equity and that all the work that we're doing is to promote more humane experiences. Hello, today I'm here with Dr. Sandoval and I will be discussing ethics with her. Thank you so much for joining me. My pleasure to be here. Thank you. So my first question for you is across disciplines, ethics means different things to different scholars. What is ethics to you? For me, ethics really is about a guiding philosophy that looks at, are we doing work for the good and betterment of people, or are we doing work that has the potential to do harm? So like at its most fundamental level, do no harm would be something that I think of when I think of ethics, which is just really simple and basic, and it gets a lot messier and more nuanced. But I do think, especially for folks in my field, because I work in communication, uh, and I do a lot of community engaged work, ethics really is looking at uh, a humanistic perspective, making sure that the lens we use is a lens of equity and that all the work that we're doing is to promote more humane experiences. Right. So then what pushed you to study communication and culture? So my journey was a little bit different than I think typical. I did not think I would get a PhD. I did not think I would be a professor. Uh, I was definitely headed down the path to work in law. And so I had always had an interest in law and policy and really looking at differential impacts policy has when that's actually implemented and analyzing that. I did my master's degree at a law school in dispute resolution because I was really interested in how we manage difference of perspective and lived experience, especially in the policymaking realm but also just an everyday conflict and communication across difference. And working in that space for a while, working in the courts, <laughs> working with lawyers, I you know, got to experience my disillusionment with the quote unquote justice system uh, and really saw the impact of difference, the impact of our different lived experiences or different perspectives. Uh, a lot of that is rooted, of course, in kind of our deep structure of our culture, and I wanted to spend more time focusing on uh, people and communities and those kinds of impacts. And eventually that led me um, to look into uh, a communication and culture degree because my undergrad had been communication and journalism. And that seemed to make a lot of sense because I was always interested in the language that we use to talk about things, uh, the kind of language that harms, the kind of language that heals, and how we need to really understand some of the fundamental differences in our lenses on those things when we are working across difference and difficulty. But could you tell me about connections um, of ethics to your work specifically? Mm -hmm. So a lot of my work is in the context of uh, healthcare, in the context of education, and now I'm doing a lot more work in the context of environmental work. So. Um, and it's all based in community engagement. And so ethics uh, for my work is very much rooted, I think, in our methodological training and also in the extensive discussions we have about ethical communication. <laughs> what does it even mean to communicate through an ethical lens and understanding ethics and the norms and expectations we have around that as having some pretty deep differences rooted in culture um, and identity and lived experience. So it all kind of comes back to that. But particularly for me, uh, when I went back for my PhD and started to engage in research, I was trained at a center for community-based research. And really, uh, we talk about things in a very different way. And some other aspects of the research community, especially in other qualitative approaches, have really caught up to this language. But when I was in my program many years ago, it was still felt like a new conversation to me about uh, not thinking about folks who you're engaging with in your research work as subjects, as people that we, we don't do research on 
people, we do research with people that the ethics of participation, the ethics of uh, rethinking hierarchy, of rethinking power difference, and thinking about are we doing work that's good for the community or are we just interested in work that propels our own career? and how to actually have more transparent conversations about that tension and what it looks like to partner with communities and community organizations in a way that is ethical, in a way that is community-centered and community-based, not just community-placed, not just because you're located there, but because you're actually interested in using your skills as a researcher and your resources as an agent of the university to solve the problems that communities have identified, not the ones that we imagine might exist. Right. So then again, you kind of touched on my next question already. Um, you talked about how you personally want to study it because of personal beliefs. So then has ethics been a large part of your specific studies? I think certainly with regard to the methodological considerations, it shows up a lot in, in the work that I do and spend a lot of time talking about things like my positionality, researcher self-reflexivity, and then also thinking about it, not just in the research work that I do, but in the very way that I structure my job. So thinking about how I mentor students, what my classroom looks like in terms of these perspectives that we shouldn't just save them for our community partners. <laughs> Those things should show up in our classrooms. They should show up in our office. It should show up in the way that we think about running a university. And so I think that it it is really a, aligned with my perspective in all of the pieces of my job, including leadership roles or <clears throat> faculty representation. And it continues to be uh, really, important point that I like to make that we have to use an equity lens, we have to think about unintended consequences, and we have to care about process and how we engage and things like transparency, and not just use them as, you know, lip service to these bigger ideas, and implement them in an effective way. And what better place than to live up to those values than a university, even though we fall short all the time. I think, you know, secondarily, while I am interested in the larger questions of equity and this kind of transdisciplinary research, I, I do a lot of diversity, equity, and inclusion work and how we talk about things like DEI, how we use critical lenses on our organizations, on all kinds of systems that are fundamentally structured in ways that oppress minoritized folks and marginalized folks. And so I think that is, there are really interesting questions that we're facing in that realm right now about how to talk about that effectively, how to take our complicated and complex human history seriously and be able to talk about things that are both heavy and hard in effective ways. and we continue to fall short in that realm too and being able to do that really well uh, in the dominant culture in the United States. And those questions are really important. And I think the work that we continue to do with young folks, so like this coastal work that I've been doing, we have a Gulf Scholars Program, talking to early career people, talking to college students who are thinking about these things, the conversations are so different. And I think they're actually very hopeful in terms of the ways that young folks are, or younger folks are thinking about these problems and thinking about working together across difference. And I think it's important to note both the things that are heavy there, but also the hope that shows up when we work with college students and that that's really at the core of our purpose <laughs> at a university. And so those are those are some of the important things that I'm trying to remind myself daily in my work right now and I think are valuable for others to remember as well.